Everybody knows IWC, but nobody buys them. At least the vast majority of people that know them don't own an IWC. Now let's figure out why IWC isn't mainstream yet. Quick thanks to Ken Watches, their watch dealer in Hong Kong. They let me get hands on with this piece. They've got four stores in Hong Kong. Check them out. Now I'm going to quickly share my impressions of this IWC Pilot Chronograph, um, how it wears, what I think of the watch, and then we're going to get onto the bigger question of why IWC isn't mainstream and why no one buys IWC. If you've got an IWC, then just let me know why you picked that particular watch and what were you considering in that category as well. So this piece is the IWC Pilot's Chronograph Reference 3717-01. It's a 42mm piece and if you looked at the dial layout you probably already figured out that it's got the Valjoux 7750 in it. I picked this watch to do this video because it's probably my favourite IWC that I've seen thus far. But it's my favourite because this to me is nearly perfectly dimensioned. So how does the watch wear? The watch wears really well. That's the reason I like it. This is 42 millimeters, but it doesn't wear larger than 42 millimeters. Most IWC watches tend to wear larger than their claimed case diameter, mainly because of their lugs. Their lugs are huge, and the lug to lug distance is far more important in wearability than the actual case diameter. But this one, I think it wears true to size. Let's go to the ocean front and continue this video. So here's what I really like about IWC watches. Their dial aesthetics are on point. I really, really love these dials. They found a way to integrate the day-date functionality without making it look clunky, ugly, and unsymmetric, even though it's not really symmetric. The hands in particular are my favorite. They're really sharp and they've got crisp loom. I love these hands. Even, even in the sub-dials, I just like the shape of them and they go, they go so well together. I do think the hands are the best part. They're much cooler to me than Rolex, Omega and all the other competitors. I think IWC really nails the hands, especially in the Flieger aesthetic. Additionally, the AR coating, fantastic. Zinn, IWC, Breitling, they do AR coating so damn well. Sometimes it really doesn't feel like there's a glass between the dial and the atmosphere. So on the wrist, the watch wears rather well and unobtrusively, mainly because of the dimensions that I mentioned. It does not wear excessively large, thanks to the lugs. There's also a bird right here that's checking me out. Additionally, the bracelet. The bracelet is quite nice. I really like these links. I like how they're so small. It gives it a lot of character. The clasp also has a nice finishing. Even though this is an older watch, 2008, 2010, the bracelet is quite substantial. Most watches 10, 15 years ago, they really lacked, particularly in the bracelet department. This doesn't. What's nice is the way it integrates with the lugs. It doesn't seem like the watch was particularly designed to be on a bracelet or on a strap. It looks like it can do both reasonably well. So now let's get on to what the big problem with IWC is and why they're not mainstream. Well, there's three reasons. Dimensions, redundancy, and identity. Dimensions-wise, most IWC watches are big. They're pilot watches at their core. Most of their lineup is pilot watches, fliegers. So they, they need to be large, easily visible, and legible. All of these things make the watch less wearable in a daily context. Most people are not looking to wear something so large on their wrist, and most people are not pilots. I mean, the, the point of IWC is not just to cater to pilots, just like dive watches are not really worn by divers, but everyone is able to wear a dive watch because of the dimensions, whereas with IWC, they, that, that's a lot harder. Particularly with all their watches 
above 40 millimeters, so 41, 45, 48 millimeters. All of these watches have gigantic lug to lug lengths because most of the IWC lugs are rather large and protruding. So overall that makes it quite obtrusive on the wrist. Now the second thing, and my main critique of this particular watch that we just took a look at, is the thickness. All IWC watches are just so thick. Even their in-house watches, they're not really that thin. Now, something like the Mark 17 300, that's, that's fine, that's quite wearable. But all of these chronographs and even the, the watches with 8-day power reserves and all of what's special about IWC, the watches are far too thick. Now, with the non-in-house movements like the Valjoux 7750 in this piece, that's a thick movement and you can't really do much. I understand why it's thick. But with the in-house calibers and going forward, IWC really needs to make their watches a lot thinner, a lot more wearable because they command a high price. They, they command the similar bracket as Rolex or even sometimes a little bit more for what you're getting. And the watch is not as wearable and not as nice on the wrist. So the thickness is a major factor there and if they're able to reduce it, I think that would make the brand overall a lot more appealing. Now redundancy. IWC is kind of like Omega with their Speedmaster, but Omega has tightened up their Speedmaster lineup. They're not doing that many editions of the Speedy. Well, Moonswatch set aside. So IWC essentially has so many different variants of the same watches. The main complications are kind of the same, and then they have so many variants of each. And that's one of the reasons why IWC struggles to have a set of iconic pieces. And this redundancy also ties into their brand identity because when you think of IWC, you think of pilot watches, but, but they also have some dive watches, they've got just regular three-hander watches, then they've got really highly complicated watches like the Portuguese and the Perpetual Calendars. And all of these things are quite disconnected. They also had what used to be iconic, the engineer lineup, but now that's not really a thing anymore. So this confusion within what the brand stands for is it are you just making pilot watches or are you trying to do everything and they've been trying to do everything and when you do that every category tends to lack a little bit it takes a long time to bring a strong lineup like Rolex and if you take a look at Rolex's lineup every watch kind of connects to the next watch and it all kind of makes sense but that's been refined over so long and they've been very careful about not releasing too many models without too much thought behind each. So I do think instead of having this disenfranchised approach to just creating different types of watches, they really need to consider all of their watches under one identity and some, and they need some way to link each watch to the next watch. Kind of like what Apple does with their product lineup. Every hundred dollars more, you get something slightly better. So I do think if IWC were to correct all these things and I think they're making a conscious effort, um, particularly in, as of 2022, we can see the brand become mainstream rather soon. It really depends on how they carry out the plan. If you like this video, if you like the other videos, see you there. Cheers.